Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. I was born July 4th, 1986. Today, thank you for tuning in, trying to figure out some more about your dog and try to get into a better place. I know one thing, sometimes things just aren't as easy as you want them to be. And sometimes it takes a little bit more. Sometimes it's just, it's, it takes forever, it feels like, like we're never going to get there. So one thing I want to talk about today is, uh, that's a question up front. When is a dog no longer a puppy? When does a puppy turn into a dog? Because I think that this is something that I see that goes on a lot, that I see it in my face, I see it on the Instagram, I see it on the YouTube, I see it everywhere. Where it's like, we're raising puppies and we're not raising dogs. And we need to make sure that when we're having a dog in our household, that we're not looking at that dog as if I like what it's doing now and I'm gonna keep on like amplifying and, and wanting it to stay the same. I know there's a movie out there, it's called Boss Baby. It's a it's very funny, very cute little animated movie talking about the how to get into people's hearts and that is to be able to have the forever baby, the, 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 the forever dog, forever puppy, and so that we can replace the babies and we keep the dogs. And this one thing that's really interesting about that movie is always having a puppy forever. That's a cute, it's cool, it seems nice, it seems neat, but in reality, that's absolute chaos because you would want to be able to get that dog to grow up to be able to turn into a mature animal on this planet and not being that puppy anymore. That puppy that you got to keep watching all the time and taking out to go potty all the time and keep on micromanaging everything to make sure it's going to stay safe and stop chewing up everything and, and stop getting into everything and stop jumping on everything and, and, and get up and, and be able to raise, and raise that dog up. But something that I've just come to realize is most, most people, most people are raising puppies. You're not raising dogs. And that's why you're having the issues. And that's why I'm going to say like a lot of dogs that are in the shelters, they're puppies. They're, they're still, they're, they're grown. So they're, they're a grown dog at this point, two years old, three years old, one and a half years old, even one year old, they're grown, like physically and even majorly, immensely, spiritually and everything, they're grown. But they're still acting and being treated as if they're puppies. And that's why we're running into many, 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 many issues. Because we're not looking at the end result. We're looking at just the beginning and we like it and we want to stay in it. Because when you're in that puppy stage, it's cool, it's cute, it's fun. Because in reality, you could have all the excuses in the world. All the excuses. Oh, he bites. Oh, because he's a puppy. Oh, he jumps on me. Oh, because he's a puppy. Oh, he still pees in the house. Oh, it's okay. He, it, it's because he's a puppy. He, he's biting the male person. Oh, it's cute. It's all right. He's just a puppy. It's just a puppy. It's all right. And we can throw excuse after excuse after excuse. And for me personally, I'm already going to say, those excuses are not valid. If it's a puppy, it doesn't mean that it should be jumping on it if you don't want to. If it's a puppy, it doesn't mean that it should be on the couch if you're telling it not to. And those, we have to show that puppy what it is we want that dog to be like. Because if we don't show that puppy what we're looking for, you're going to find out that everything is going to amplify times just tenfold with when that dog becomes a dog. Because when that dog becomes a dog, it's not so easy to just look at that dog and just say, hey, get off the couch. Just say, get off the couch. That's where the teeth is going to start to be shown. Hey, come back and stay on the leash with me. I, I'm telling you to stay with me. Now you're going to run into issues that now, now I've got teeth at you. You got pushiness. You got the dog that's just digging and pulling and going crazy to the point that you're just like, what the heck's going on here? Because that's where you've been building that relationship with that puppy and not building a relationship with a dog. And at the same time, it doesn't even need to be a dog, a puppy that you raise from eight, 10, 12 weeks old. It could be a dog that you just got, but you look at that dog you just got like it's a cute little puppy. You're like, oh, he's, he's, it's just new, that newness that comes to you. And that newness that comes to you, you allow the newness to do crazy stuff. And I don't know why this is just a a human, a human thing that we do across the board, man. I mean, this comes down to cars, to houses, to, to guys and girls, to children, to animals, to everything. When we first get it, first get involved with it, we don't even realize all the, say, bad things about it. Like, I remember the first house that I bought. I saw it. I was like, oh, this is nice. It's nice. Everything looks good. And then you live in it for a couple of months, and you're like, whoa, what is that? Whoa, that's like falling apart right there. Whoa, what's going on with that window? I didn't notice that five of these windows in this house were all hazy and you couldn't barely see through them. When I looked at the house, I thought it was just fantastic, man. It was just the greatest thing on the planet. It was just perfect looking. And that's the same with these dogs. You get the dog and you're looking at it like it's just so perfect. It's so amazing. It's so cute. It's so wonderful. And you're teaching that dog the wrong rules up front, especially if it's not even a puppy, but it actually is a dog at that moment. They, that's where I think that a lot of us are actually struggling the most because we're putting the wrong expectations out there up front, what we're trying to do, thinking when he gets older, then I will instill these rules and put the discipline and lay the law down, as some people would say. When he gets older, 
But now, since he's a puppy, he can just be free and run and do whatever he wants. And when he gets older, or when he's been with me longer, and so when, when we build a better bond and, and, and he starts to, to say, trust me more, or whatever you want to say with that, then I'll start to guide him to how to walk better on leash and how to get off furniture and how to stop biting on me and how to stop biting people and nibbling and doing all this crazy madness. No, it, it, it's not later on. It's, it's right now. It's right now we have to look at what we want our future to look like. Because in reality, this is one of the, for some people, for me, I think it's cool. But a lot of people think it's unfortunate. These dogs don't live that long. They live long. They live long enough just to like really just really appreciate them. But not long enough where they're just always there for you. So it's really fast. It's still impressive to me how fast this has gone with this dog. He's about to be six years old this year. This is gone. Six years is gone. And if he lives to be 18, a third of his, I mean, yeah, a third of his life is just gone. It's just, I, it, I remember him being a puppy. It's just gone. And it goes so fast. It goes so fast. So we don't really have to, the, the time to be able to just sit around and just say, I just want to stay in this puppy stage. We, we, we have to start to work upon that dog and treat it as a dog. I, I understand we have our puppy, but we can't just allow it to do whatever we want, thinking that when he's not a puppy anymore. Because I ask that question to so many people, and, and, and everyone gives me the same like, look on their face like, I never thought about that. I'm like, how, how come we're not thinking about what, what is that day that the shift happens? What day is it? You know, what month is it? When he's finally 12 months old, are you like, he's no longer a puppy, now we're into something else? Is it eight months old? Is it six months old? Is it 15, 36 months old? When are we getting to that point that it's like, puppy here, this date, it's, it's, it's an adult. It's a dog at this moment. And, th and then we, we move forward. Because there, that, that's just not the reality of it. They're always a dog, but we're treating it as if it's not a dog. And that's why we're having, what I'm gonna say is chaos with our dogs. Because we're trying to treat them like something that they're not. We're trying to come at them with, oh, sweets, and oh, please, and, and there's, there is gonna be a shift that does happen one day. And this is where a lot of people get in, in a lot of problems because you're treating the young dog a certain way. Uh, Aura, get down. You're, you're treat, uh, get down. Where are you at? There you are. You're, you're treating the, the uh, get down, the young dog a certain way. And a young dog is, this is one thing I can say right up front, right away, with something that I know a lot of puppies do. They stay close. A lot of puppies stay close to you. You go out in new environments, and you're like, I don't even need a leash. This dog, this dog is amazing. Like, it's just always with me. It's always nearby. I call him. I'm like, hey, Fred, come here. I don't know anyone has got a dog named Fred, but I don't know why that sounds kind of cool. I might want to do something like that myself. But hey, Fred, and it just snaps, and it's right there. And all of a sudden, one day, Fred is just walking and walking and walking. And you call him, and he looks back at you like, woman, I'm not coming to you. I'm going over here. That this always happens. And since we haven't been working on it from the time, the instant, the day that we got that dog, you're going to notice that it's going to be really bad, really hard, really just challenging to get that dog to change from that because its whole life with you has been a certain way. And then there's something that goes on with a lot of dogs as well. A lot of puppies, they love to be held. They love to just sit on your lap. They love to just snuggle up with you. But then something happens when a lot of these dogs get older and it's not just boys, but girls as well, that they don't want that anymore. So what you used to do with holding and hugging them, they were cool with it. They're like, oh, I like this too. But then something happened where they just, they, 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 the only way I could say it is literally they had a switch. They just like almost overnight woke up and they just woke up in a way of like, boom, I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I want, I'm independent now. I could do what I could do. I could go out and chase rabbits if I can. They just, they just, something happens to them and they no longer want you holding them like that. But you've been doing it the whole time and you want that. And at the same time, think this, think, think, think about this. this. Some people get confused with like, oh, my dog is a lap dog. It's like, no, you, you, you told that dog to do that. You told that puppy to do that. You got a puppy and there's still a very rare, I've seen one puppy so far that is over 50 pounds. <laughs> so it's a huge dog, just impressive what it was. But uh, most puppies are super small, super light, really tiny little things. And we could just hold them, put them on our laps. But you got to realize that dog is going to be a dog one day. And when that dog becomes a dog, how big is it going to be and how much is it going to weigh? Because these, these little things that are cute now, when this dog turns into being like, shoot, for, for instance, a great Pyrenees. I don't know why. I just seen one today, a little puppy. They're so small for how big they actually grow out to be. Like they start puppies are, are so tiny. Like it's almost comparable to being like a border collie size. Like they're so close. They're tiny little fluffy fluff balls. But then they turn into this 120, 130, 160 pound dog. 
And it's, it, we, we got to keep that in mind with everything that's going on with this puppy, realizing that it's, it's going to change and it's going to have a shift and it's going to have a, a, a different attitude about it one day because it's, it's no longer a puppy. And that's where I could say the same with us as human beings, that we, we, we are, we are, we're children, we're, we're babies, we're baby children, and then we're children, and then we get to an age where we're kind of like, I could do it on my own. And that's where a lot of people say they challenge, get challenged with the kids. When you get no teenage years, I could do whatever I want. I don't need you. I'm good. I don't need to take your advice anymore. I want to be my own. I want to do my own life. I want to be about my own ways. And the dogs do the exact same thing. They get to a stage where I want to do my own thing. I've been listening to you for so long, but now I just, I just want to, I want to go make it happen. I want to go get my own food. I want to go sleep when I want to sleep. I want to go walk for when I want to walk. I want to go potty when I feel like going potty. And they want to do everything without you. And, and, and it can get very, very challenging for most people because you've never built any sort of foundation with that dog thinking, oh, it's just a puppy. And then that puppy turns into that dog and that dog starts to just run, run you, run your household, run everything about you because it, it, it doesn't care anymore. It's, it's turned into what it is. And we should have been looking at it as a dog day one that we got it. And again, it doesn't matter if you've had the puppy puppy. It's, it's you getting a dog for the first time. You looking at that animal and saying, oh, he's so cute. And, and especially, 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 this is one thing that I think is just, is, is really, really, really challenging for a lot of people. You get a dog from the shelter and you bring that dog in and you have this, this sob boo hoo story about how it was in such bad living conditions and you're, you're going to come in and you're going to love it. And you're just, you're, you're not giving it any guidance. You're just trying to hold it. You're just trying to give them treats all day. You're just, you're just, you're, you, you know, the best word I can use there is just being a pushover to the dog, allowing a dog to do whatever. Because, oh, it's been in bad tragedy, so it's okay. He could bite me a little bit here and there. He could jump on me here, here or there. You know, it's going to show him that he could trust me. And those situations end up really, really bad because you, uh, uh, yeah, because you, you, you're letting that dog see that you are a complete pushover. And the dog is going to do that to you. It's going to run you because the dog is looking for someone to guide it, to lead it, to show it where to go. And that's something that I, I, I think a lot of people would have much, much better success with your dogs. If day one you looked at it, it was like, it's not a puppy, but it's a dog. It may be young right now, but that young, I need to show it what I want it to do now, right now. And that's something that I say to a lot of people, back, especially when I used to do a lot of puppy training. Get your week out, man. Get your week. Play with it. Jump. Let it chew on you. And stick your finger in its mouth and, and have your fun. And after that week, it's time to start letting the dog, that puppy, know how to be a dog now. So that you could be set up for success for the remainder 15, 16, 17, hopefully some of these dogs 25 years. I mean, the way we change what we're doing and exercising them right and, and giving them physical therapy and going, <laughs> I'll try to get my dog to the car. See, they got dog, dog chiropractors out here. I'm like, I go, shoot, why not let my working dogs go as well? The, the, how we're feeding them and changing them. Some of these dogs are going to live for a very, very long time. And you want to make sure that they're going to have a really nice, successful, good, long life. The more anxious they are, the more paranoid, the more stressed, the more they're, they're having to be in control and dominant on the world, the less that they're going to live because that's a, that's a hard life to live. That's a hard life to live. It's very, very challenging to live that for a dog. A human being, we can handle some serious stuff, but dogs, they, they're, they're so simple beings. They're so simple. And we as humans are simple, but we can handle more. The same way like my great Pyrenees can stay up all night and be on alert and make sure that, that the threat is gone. Like the size of that dude's head is as big as mine. He's got a brain the same size as my brain dang near in the side. He's big and they're big to be able to handle some more thinking processing, more capability of being able to, to, to deal with the stress of life. As opposed to some of these really tiny dogs, like these little, <laughs> I don't even know which ones they are right now. The little things, they always be shaking. They, 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 they shaking, they so, they so little, they so like terrified is all I can really say in reality. Because they know they can't do anything. They know a bird can come and take that thing away. So they live a completely different life. And most of those really small dogs, and it's the same with big, really big dogs, they don't live that long because they're having to deal with so much extra. But a, a, a medium sized dog, they, they live for a really long time when we don't have them in that level of stress. And that's something that we should be looking at from day one when we get the dogs. I understand that it's a puppy, but puppies do not just have a free for all and be able to do what they want. Puppies are not gonna not like you because you tell it no. And you tell it to get off the couch, for instance. Not saying that, I'm, I don't care if the animals are on furniture. It's just a matter of making sure that we're, we're not playing no, no running, skipping, chasing games in the house. 
We're just hanging out at the house. Outside, we could run, we could chase, we could roll, we could dig, we could, we could bark, we could do whatever we want outside. But inside of the home, we're not doing all this just, just pacing and in every single window and chewing up blinds and, and running, jumping off the couch back and forth and jumping off the bed and running circles. We're not doing any of that. So you got to start letting that puppy know right away, we're not doing any of this, man. This isn't what we do. And the more and more that you just allow it to keep on happening, the more and more you're running into just, it, it's going to be hard, very hard to convince that dog not to do that in the future. But it'd be very easy for you to just give that dog to your neighbor and your neighbor still looks at it and says, oh, dog, let me treat dog like dog. And you're going to see that your neighbor have great success with your dog, like literally overnight, because they're not going to have that rapport going on there. And that's where a lot of us are getting challenged right now. It's, 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 it's the puppies and the, the, the whole newness of I, I saved this dog and, and I'm giving it a good home now. And, and I'll just let some things go because I don't want to disappoint the dog because it was living in such bad living conditions. We can't look at them that way. We, we, we cannot do that. We got to look at today. Here we are. How does the dog look? It looks pretty healthy. If it's not, then start feeding it so that it can get, gain some weight. But he's fine. It's all right. It's, it's good to go. And now let's start putting in the set rules to make sure that we're, the dog understands what's going on here. But the more that you delay on that, the more you just sit back and just, you know, one day, we'll finally get there. That one day just doesn't happen. And that one day happens that you run into that scenario that I got to get rid of this dog because this dog is just, it's, it's going crazy right now. It's going absolutely crazy. And I can't, it's not listening to me. It's not doing anything that I say because these dogs always, always are going to have a shift, especially if you have a young dog right now, it's going to have a shift where it's no longer doing the things that it does now. It does puppy stuff. It's like stuff that I keep getting. I, I want to get me some baby goats, or not really baby goats. There's a couple of mama goats that are about to push me out some baby goats. I watch it over and over again. The baby goats are so freaking cool. They be jumping and, and doing all this stuff, but you never, ever, 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 ever see an adult goat do that. Never. I never see cows running. They only do if they see something, they'll run in a herd to go somewhere. They never run. But you know what baby calves do? They are running, they are jumping, they are rolling, they are just doing the most. And then one day, literally, you can look out there in the field and see one day, they don't do that anymore. They're just done. And that's the same exact thing that happens to dogs. They're running, they're playing, they're doing the extra, doing the most. And then one day, you run into that scenario that now they're like, what's going on here? Like, why am my dog looking like this? And now we need to have already put the foundation in on that dog to understand who we are before that starts to happen to us. Because that's when the dog is then going to start to challenge you. It's going to start to say, hey, I know you like to do this before, but I don't like that anymore. So what are we going to do now? And that's where the dogs, in my opinion, the ones that really get really, really mouthy, really bitey with you. Because you used to hold them too much. And they hit an age where they're like, I don't want you holding me like that. Don't touch me like that anymore. Like, woman, I said, don't touch me. Then they start growling and showing teeth. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, what's, what's going on here? Like, like we, we've been snuggling your whole life. Like, what's happening? That dog grew up and it said, I don't want this anymore. I don't want you touching me like that. And then it gets to the point that it gets super serious that it says, I don't want no one touching me at all right now. Not until you show me some respect to, to touch me the, the right way. That's a dog giving you that pushback. And I've heard this so many, to, so many times. So many times I've seen this. that The dog was awesome and then now the dog isn't. It's because the dog was just accepting and tolerating some stuff. And then one day it just decided, no, no more. No more of that. No more. No more. And, and that's not for us to pick and choose in reality if the dog likes to be held like that. It's not for us to choose and say, you're going to do it because I like it. The dog may not like it. And if the dog doesn't like it, you're, you're, you're just out of luck, man, in reality. You're out of luck. You're out of luck. You have to start to show that dog, give that dog the respect that it's looking for. And then maybe it'll allow you to do that in the future. That's how it is with my, my Johnny man here. He doesn't really like to be held. But today, he's cool with it. He'll come sit right next to me, lay his head on my lap. But before, he's always been a distance. Because somehow, some way, someone, because he didn't like to be touched at all when I first, I mean, I got two dogs, two shepherd-like dogs like that. It didn't like to be touched because someone I just know was holding him. And he said, back off, man, back off. Stop, get off of me. I don't like that. I don't want to be held like that. And that's, that's the individual dogs that just make that decision to say that, that is what it is. And that's why we need to be day one looking at our the puppies and realizing we're, we're raising dogs here. We're not raising puppies. We're raising a dog, and I have to say that to as many people as absolute possible. Stop thinking that you're raising puppies. You're not. You're raising up a dog. And once you understand that, you can start looking at that dog day one and say, this is what I'm looking for for you to be able to do. I want you to be able to walk on leash like this. Because if you put a 12-week-old dog on leash 
and you tell the dog to stay with you and just hang out with it on leash when you're out in public, in, in days, it's going to hang with you and know not to take off. It's going to know. It's the same concept of how they train elephants to, to hook on a leash. They do it when they're babies so that when they're old, they don't even challenge it. They don't push it. They don't, they don't give any, any fuss. They just know that this is what it is. This is what the rules are. Instead of just allowing it to just run free and do whatever it wants. Pulling like crazy on a leash. Oh, it's a puppy. He'll get out of it when he gets older. <laughs> it's not going to get out of it when he gets older. That's not the way this world works with just about any and everything on this planet. There's no such thing as just put time and it'll be better tomorrow. The more time you put in it, the more division, the more separation, the more chaos, the more just, just negative stuff is going to come from it. It just doesn't get better. The only stuff that gets better with time is when you work on it and give it time. That's the only thing that gets better. And that's what we need to understand with dogs is day one. We work on it and give it time. And then in the future, we're going to see what it is that we were working on that we wanted in the beginning. That's why it's an amazing thing to be able to have such a, a young dog to be around because we were looking at what do I want this dog to be like? And you start working on that every day. What you thought you were going to have in a couple of years, you're going to have in a couple of months. And that dog is just going to be very, very in tune with you. But when you look at that dog and say, oh, it's just, it's just a puppy and, and, and I don't want to try to tell it what to do for one or try to restrict it or anything like that, you, you, you're, you're going to run into that case that you, you're, you're just going to be button heads with your dog. You're button heads. So start raising dogs up because that's what they're going to be. They're not going to be puppies forever. And that's a, <laughs> for, for me personally, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but puppies are cool for a little bit. But dogs are absolutely amazing. And puppies are, are way, they're, they're a lot to manage and handle and deal with. But dogs are not. And then there's a lot of issues going on that I could talk about this puppy dog stuff a lot. Because a lot of y'all are still training and treating your two, three, four, five year old dog like a puppy. And a dog is like, let's go, let's go. Let's, let's make something happen here. Because you're still, you're still trying to give me a treat every other step like I'm an eight week old puppy here. And it's like, let's go, let's, let's, let's elevate this. I'm a dog. I'm good. Like, let's, let's make this happen. And then that's where we're starting to get frustration because the dog is trying to push this along. But you're like, no, no, no. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. It's like that for me trying to say, I don't even going to go that far right now. But it's something that a lot of us are struggling with the dogs because we're treating them like puppies and not like dogs. And dogs want to be treated like dogs because that's what they are. They're not puppies. They're not this just giving sweet baby talks and all the time and, all, and, and everything like that. They, they don't really respond all that well to that. Most dogs I see when you try to get down and get all cued and try to talk all sweet to them, they look at you very, very confused. They're always like, what's going on? And, and depending on the dog, that can be a very sticky situation. That's why kids get jammed up the most with dogs. They got this high energy, got this, woo, look at the dog. And they go to the dog and the dog bites them because the dog's like, I don't know what's going on here right now. What's happening? What are you doing? Like, why are, you, why are you all up on me like that? And a dog has to do something because it, it, it feels like it's, it's, it, it's in a life or death situation for whatever reason in a dog's mind. Dogs are tough, but for whatever reason, dogs just still have that scaredness in them. That nothing on this planet in reality is just this bold, confident in 100% of situations. They get a little scared, get a little nervous. And when dogs get scared, nervous, they got this teeth that they use. And this teeth just hurts us like human beings like crazy. So we'd be showing the puppy how to be a dog right away so that it never needs to result to that. It never needs to get into that. And we treat the dog as a dog so that it never runs into that weird situation that it thinks that it needs to try to protect itself. So that right away it knows what it, what it, what it is and what it's going to be. Not thinking that one day we're going to get there. It just it, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. And, and I hope that I don't know how we've got disconnected as a people thinking that with, with time things will get better. I don't know anything on this planet that that method works for. Because some people before would be, oh yeah, that works in a relationship. Just give it some time. It'll be better one day. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Nothing works that way. You can't just forget about it and then come back to it later and it's going to be good to go. It just doesn't work that way. We have to put in the work. We have to make changes. We have to do stuff. And then with that, with the time, we will get into a very, very, very nice place. A very nice place. Somewhere that we are actually very excited about, as opposed to feeling like frustrated and just irritated and angry about. We'll be in a nice spot because we put in the work required up front and realize what it is that we're working with here. And we're not working with puppies. We're working with dogs. We're not working with sad and scared and nervous and thankful that, that we took them out of the shelter. No, we're working with dogs. And dogs don't care about where they were. They care about where they are. They don't care about where they're going to go. They care about right now. They care where we are here, here in the moment, 
here is all they care about. They're not worried about what happened 15 minutes ago in the shelter. They're here. They're like, oh, this is my new spot. I'm going to get in a car now. Oh, this is my new house. I'm in a house now. And, and we can't just try to consult, soothe them for months and months and months because we in our brains are like, oh, it must have been so bad for you there. And at the same time, something I used to mess up with myself, trying to come up with backstories about my dogs, as opposed to making a new story for them right here, right now. The new story of why, why, why do I have two shepherds that are always have been weary of women? Like, I, that's very rare. But I would always have these stories, oh, maybe this girl did this to him, maybe this happened, this, and that's a horrible thing to do. That's a horrible thing to put on a dog. And just understand that I see where he is now, and let's move forward now. You're not worried with me, so let's move forward now. You're not worried when I give you distance from the things that you don't like, so let's, let's keep on working on that now. Instead of worrying about what could have been. Because when we worry about what could have been, we always go to, I don't know why, but we just go towards the, especially shelter dogs. We go towards the, oh, he was abused, he was hurt, he was neglected, he was just, just beat down, destroyed, he was beat. We always go to that. And then when we start putting that in our brains, we start to treat the animal differently. And then when we start to treat that animal differently, then that animal starts to do things to us that are, are, are not right. That, that they, they don't like that. They don't appreciate that because they're dogs. And it's something that a, a lot of people just really need to understand. Stop thinking that what used to happen, that they even remember it. And stop trying to put something on them. But treat them right here, right now, where they are, with what's going on. The dog isn't jumping? Cool, the dog's not jumping. Let's continue to keep on praising that, rewarding that, and saying good to that. The dog is, is jumping up, and you can tell him to get down, and he gets down. And you say, hey, man, good job for getting down. I appreciate that. And move on with your day. Move on with your life. Understand that it's not going to just disappear one day, that you've got to work on it now. Thank you.